So I'm going to talk to you now about the Universal Transverse Mercator Reference System. And to start with, I thought we'd take a look at a Mercator map of the world, which is extremely well known and um, one of those that has a lot of politics on it because of the distortion that it gets. So Mercator is a cylindrical projection, meaning that it's wrapped around the center and it has a standard line that is on the equator. So right there. So distortion is the least at the equator and expands greatly as you move north and south. And so people often point out that Greenland and Mexico are the same size of area, but since Mercator is a conformal map, it's preserving shape and not area, and that's why we get our huge distortions. It's interesting, too, that Mercator um, has been reused, that people complain about its, its huge amount of distortion, but it's the underlying foundation for Google Maps. If you look and you zoom all the way out on Google Maps, you can spot it. But the transverse Mercator, rather than using a standard line at the equator, flips it, if you will, so that the equator runs north to south, that the line that's touching the cylinder becomes a line of longitude instead of a line of latitude. And UTM, or Universal Transverse Mercator, is probably the most commonly used reference system in the world, in GIS. So let's take a little closer look at how it breaks apart. So we get these, we do zones throughout the world, but these strips, or within the zones, has, instead of just one standard line, it does two. It does two standard lines just on either side of the central meridian, thus making it a secant projection, meaning that we're cutting through the world twice. But remember, the standard lines are really cool because it preserves scale there. So you get minimal amount of distortion as you move um, throughout a zone. So um, you can also see that there's a little bit of an overlap between the two zones. So if you get a location that is near the edge of a zone, you can get coverage in both of, uh, or in two zones as well. So the defining things with um, UTM system is remember with all reference systems, we first read right and then up. So we read our eastings first, which is looking at it from west to the east, the numbers get larger, and our northings, which is from the south to the north. So the defining lines for the um, UTM then becomes the equator, is the zero point from which we measure um, our northings off of in the northern hemisphere. And um, from the southern hemisphere, you go off the south pole. Um, but the south, southern hemisphere is a little more interesting to work with if you're from the northern hemisphere. It gets a little difficult. So let's just focus up here for right now. So if that becomes zero, the pole becomes 10 million. And you might remember from the geodesy lecture, I'd say, well, what, why 10 million? Well, it's 10 million meters from the equator to the pole. Remember how the, the definition of the meter is 1 10 millionth the distance from the equator to the pole on a line through Paris, France? Well, that's taking advantage of that idea. So it's all based on the metric system. And so we get zero, and then we move up. The Eastings value is, it uses a little false origin, the point at which is kind of irrelevant. You don't have to worry about that. But so here's your false origin. And then it measures things going this way, from east to west. But the way that we can define it, and the, what you look for, is all, every central meridian is recognized at 500,000 meters. And then so it gives you a point of reference. If the numbers are smaller, they're to the west of the central meridian. If the numbers are larger than 500,000, they're to the east. So we're going to look at um, the UTM. And this would be the UTM grid for the globe. Notice that the poles use a slightly different system. So once you get above um, 80 degrees, or excuse me, 84 degrees north or 80 degrees south, then we switch to these things. So if you go to the Antarctic, let me know and we'll set up a time to chat. But we split it up into 60 zones starting from the international date line and wrapping its way to the east around the globe. And so each zone is um, six degrees of longitude wide, and then they're split down to um, three degrees at the central meridian within the zone. 
So when you go to read a location in UTM, you first give the zone number. So let's go back and look at our airport runway in Wisconsin, which is in zone 16. Remember, number one's over at the International Dateline. And then we get in on a map, and we've done this with the topo maps. You do your right readings first. So if I'm reading over from 23,000 meters, or there's a four, 423,000 meters from here, it's 870 meters further to the east. Then we get 423,870 meters east, and it's east of um, that false origin. But what I would say, that what the important part is, is that it's below 500,000, so we know we're just a little on the western side of the central meridian within um, zone 16. For your northings, we read from the bottom up, 4,716,000 meters north of the equator, remember? And then we add a little extra sum in there to come up with 4,716,510. And that's how you read UTM.